They have their own little conversations back and forth. They're the only two that know exactly what the other one is going through. You know, they're not twins, and they're like they're twins. Christopher and Jillian Neville are brother and sister, born two years apart with the same unexplained illness, a mysterious seizure disorder. When Christopher was born, everything seemed normal until he was three weeks old. He had a choking episode, and it was assumed it was a reflux problem. That first trip to Chia, I'll never forget it, you know. Here I am, a new mom, and scared to death, but I didn't know what was going on with my baby. Christopher was a very sick little boy, and he wasn't going to get better. I look at him and I don't know if I could be as strong as him when he's so sick. With the diagnosis still in question, Georgina and Sean Neville were worried about trying for a second child, fearful the same thing could happen again. We went for a genetic counseling session and they said it looked like a fluke, a one in a million thing that would happen and encouraged me to have another child. Reassured, these high school sweethearts persevered. They gave birth to a beautiful little girl they named Jillian. She seemed healthy at first, and then their worst fears were realized. Christopher was three weeks old when he had his first seizure, and Jillian was six weeks. Two children, two years apart, both with the same overwhelming challenges, both requiring round-the-clock care. I have people that say, oh, I don't know how you do what you do. Well, I probably would have said that 10 years ago too. I do what I do because I don't know any other way to do it. Life has its moments of normalcy, as normal as it gets when you're caring for two children with severe disabilities. To have one child become ill, but then to have another one and the same thing happen. Good job, Jillian. You gonna dance for us? The Neville children will never walk or talk or do the simple things so many parents take for granted. They are constantly in and out of hospital, and over the years, that's taken its toll. Jillian was sick in 2005, very sick. She was in ICU and had liver failure and pancreatitis, and there was no Rogers house. My husband was home all week with Christopher. On Fridays, most times we passed each other on the highway, and he would come down and spend the weekend with Jillian, and I would go home and see Christopher. And it was exhausting. Since Roger's house was built, that has changed. Georgina and uh, Sean come to visit with the children, and the nursing staff here and our child life department, the volunteers, look after Christopher and Jillian. And Georgina and Sean are able to have a life. They're able to be a normal couple so that they can re uh, rejuvenate and get their energy back and have something to give to each other. For Roger's house, it's, I need it. It's, I can't just call the neighbor across the street to watch my children. Sessions ready? I can bring my kids here and not worry. And Chio's right next door, so. Imagine never being able to run out to the store without wondering what's going on at home. Or they, Christopher and Jillian do go to school, but Georgina has to be there in case they're sick and have to come home. And then we have the nighttime and the weekends. And Roger's house was there when the Neville's strength was tested yet again, when Georgina endured her own health battle with cervical cancer. They took care of the children and me as well. I think it would have been so much harder if I couldn't have been seeing the children every day. Life is totally different. I just couldn't imagine the last few years without it, with everything we've been through. We love this place because they're our, our second family. And Roger's house will be part of their lives for some time to come.